agar solution from water and baking soda. We then added the agar solution to it, and we will now heat it to make the right solution for our experiment. We are microwaving the solution for 10 seconds so that it will become translucent. The solution must be heated for 10 seconds and stirred in between multiple times until the solution bubbled. Remove the two steel wires and add your solution into the chamber. Insert the styrofoam comb into either end of the gel chamber, leaving approximately 0.5 centimeters between the end of the box and the comb. Gently pour the agar solution into the gel chamber. Add just enough solution to the box so that the comb teeth are submerged approximately 0.5 centimeters. If the gel is too thick, it will be difficult to observe good separation of the food coloring dyes. Pour the remaining 100 milliliters of your buffer solution over the solidified gel. Add enough buffer to submerge the gel. Gently pull the comb out of the gel. The resulting well, wells will be used as reservoirs for your samples. Using the butter knife, carefully cut a thin slice from the gel from the top and the bottom to make room for the electrodes. We attach the stainless steel wire electrodes. Using a plastic syringe or medicine dropper, fill each well in the gel with a different color food dye. A small drop of food coloring dye is significant. Using the alligator clip leads, attach the battery pack to the wires resting on the gel chamber. The positive terminal of the battery pack should be connected to the positive electrode. This is the electrode towards which you want the food coloring dye to migrate as it separates. You should see bubbles forming around the electrodes in the buffer as the current passes through them. Don't get mad if I'm laughing Blame the caffeine for all the following phone calls I haven't slept a single